Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, a guitar pick holder made on the scroll saw. Well, my wife saw one of these online and she sent me a picture of it and said, hey, do you think you could make something like this? Uh, it'd probably be a good show idea. And I had a look and I thought about the process it would take to make one. And I thought, you know what? That would be a darn cool project. And that's what we're gonna do today. The project is fairly simple. There's just certain steps that you need to take. And it all starts out with a printout from your computer. Well, this is a project that relies heavily on templates, three of them in total. So what I've done is I've gone on the computer and I've just printed out a silhouette of an electric guitar. Now you can use whatever you like if you want it to be an acoustic guitar, make it an acoustic guitar. But I've printed it out to the size that I want and now I'm using spray adhesive I've sprayed the back generously and uh, let it dry up for three minutes. And now I'm going to take this over and cut it out. But we're going to square it off here at the neck. And this will be the first template. You will also need, for the next couple steps, two more pieces exactly the same size as this one, which in this case is three and a half inches wide and five inches long. I have a number three reverse tooth blade in there and you want to remember it's a template like I said so cut as accurately as you can. And that my friends is template number one. So now it's time to do our second template. So we're going to take a second piece of quarter inch MDF, the same size at three and a half by five. We're going to line it up with the first template that we just made, just like this. Make sure that all the edges align, very important to have them aligned. Lock it in place. And now this will be for the interior of our pick holder. And all we're going to do is I'm going to take a quarter inch flat washer and I'm going to place it in here and use it as a guide bushing pretty much to go around the inside perimeter of our guitar. just like that. So we now need to cut this out as an interior cut as well. And that will be our second template. And that is our second template. There's one more to go. So what we're gonna do is take our last piece of quarter inch hardboard or MDF. We're gonna line it up perfectly at the edge, clamp it in place. And the first step here on this template is to trace exactly the outline of our second template. So we'll just go around and put our marks here There we go. So we can remove our second template now and put it aside. And the next thing that we're going to need is a guitar pick. And we're going to lay out where we want our guitar pick recesses to live inside of this guitar pick holder. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to lay a guitar pick here so yeah, I think that'll go right about there. We'll just draw a center line with a square. And then place our pick pretty much centered there where we want it. 
And once we get that done, we're going to trace it. Just like that. Now we're going to need two more recesses for picks. So the first thing we're going to do is line up our pick roughly where we want it. We'll put our square roughly about the center line of that pick, get it out of the way, draw a center line, and then do the same thing. Line up the pick as best we can. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we're going to trace it. And there's one more. <laughs> we want to place one more right here. It's a little tight, so I think we're going to reverse the pick this time to have it fit properly. Line up our center line roughly where we want it. Right about there. Place our guitar pick there and again, trace it out. So now we're going to take this over to the scroll saw. We're going to drill blade entry holes in each one of these picks and we're going to cut them out just slightly outside of the line. We want them a little bigger than what the pick is. Now that we have our three templates cut, we need our stock for our pick holder. And I have three pieces of walnut. All three of them are cut to the exact same dimensions as our templates, three and a half by five. The larger or thicker piece here is half an inch thick, and these two pieces are three sixteenths of an inch thick. The piece that we're going to concentrate on first is our middle piece. And you will also need the second template that we made. So with that second template, very carefully, we're going to put this in place, lining up all of our edges and trace around the inside of our guitar. There you go. And once you get that done, we're then going to take the second template that we made, making sure that it's up the right way, top is top, bottom is bottom, line it up with our stock, and again, use it to trace out our guitar picks. Now, it's time to cut this out. What we want to do is drill a blade entry hole in each one of these picks and pretty much cut them as they are. The other section, we want to drill a small little tiny hole right on the line, preferably in a corner, somewhere that you won't really see. And we're going to cut it as carefully as we can because we need to save the off cut. But for now, let's get this center section cut out. I have removed the number three blade and installed a number seven. So we're just going to cut these out and then we'll carry on from there. And there are the two pieces. And if we look inside, you might be able to see 
There's a line right here where our drill bit went through as well as right here. We used a 1 16th inch drill bit and although the kerf of the um, scroll saw blade took most of that away, it's still there a little bit. So I'm going to take this over to the oscillating drum sander and I'm just going to remove a tiniest little bit here of this section just to get rid of that line and I'll do the same thing on the inside here. Well now it's time for a little glue up and what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these 3 16 of an inch thick pieces. We're going to line up our edges perfectly with our center off cut, the outside piece of this here. We're going to line it up on the top of it and we're going to clamp this up and glue it together and we're going to make sure that we come inside here and clean out all the squeeze out. As well, we're going to take this piece and using our second template, we're going to line the template up and we're going to glue this piece right there, right in the middle. Now this is a little off from the template, but it should fit. Just, there we go. Just needed a little bit of a love tap. So there you go. We're gonna use that template and we're gonna glue it down in place. Once we get it clamped securely in place, we're going to remove this template very carefully and clean up any squeeze out that may be inside or outside on the cuts. At this point as well, you just want to make sure that everything is lined up right. You don't want to have this piece flipped this way by accident. Everything has to line up because what's going to end up happening eventually is once it's all dried up, this will end up being our lid. So you really want to go sparingly with this glue. You don't want a lot of squeeze out. So we're just going to dab a little around there. Just like that. Spread it around. And like I said, using the template, we'll glue it in place. Now I wouldn't suggest leaving the template on there as you know squeeze out can cause it to stick to it. So we don't want to do that. Okay, now go around with a cotton swab and some water and get any of that squeeze out cleaned up out of there. And once you're happy with that, you can put that one aside and glue up your next one. Remembering that your orientation has to be the right way around and the 3 16 board will go on the top of this piece, not the bottom. So we'll just spread our glue around. And then lining up our pieces, put it on top, and clamp it up and clean up your squeeze out on the inside. So now what? Well, now nothing. Now we wait. Uh, much like a lot of the projects that we do in woodworking, sometimes you got to wait. And in this case, we have to wait and allow that glue to completely dry up before we can move on to the next step. So you can leave it for a few hours if you like, but preferably you should leave it overnight. So I'm going to see you in the morning and we'll carry on with the next step. Well, it's the next day. We've unclamped our two little assemblies here. And at this point, you should have something that looks like this. So all I'm going to do is with a piece of sandpaper mounted to a three quarter inch piece of MDF, we're just going to sand these flat surfaces on both of our pieces. Well, these two pieces essentially go together like this. But as you can hear, hopefully, 
there's play. There's play in there. And that's okay, because it's going to be a box and a lid, right? But we want to eliminate that play until we get them separated. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use some masking tape, and we're going to place it around the inside edges here, or the outside edges rather, of this interior piece until we get a good tight fit on our lid. Well, with a good friction fit there, we now need to place the very first template that we made, making sure that it's in the same orientation as uh, our other pieces. We're going to line up the edges. This is why it is so important to have this stock all the same size, because it makes lining up the template so easy. Once we get it all lined up, we will trace out this template. You now want to put the lid onto the box itself. We're going to use some wider masking tape and around the edges we want to make sure that the lid and the box are secured together so that neither one can come loose during cutting. And at this point, we're just going to take it over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut this out using the lines that we just drew on here with our template. Well, with the main body shape cut, we now want to take the opportunity to give this whole thing a good sanding all the way around, taking off any of these sharp corners around the outside edges. I will caution you though, to keep this piece together while you're sanding. If you round any of these bottom edges of the lid or the top edges of the base, you'll end up with spaces here and it'll look a little strange. So. Keep it together and give it a good sanding. And once you have your sanding done, of course, you have yourself an awesome little box to store your guitar picks. And there you have it. A scroll saw made guitar pick holder. Guys, what a fantastic project to use up scrap wood in your shop. Now, by using scrap wood on this project, what it has done, even though it's all the same species, is you get some inconsistencies in the box between the top layers and the middle layers. I really don't mind. Once the finish goes on, hopefully it'll all blend in together. But if you really want it to make it that much more striking, you don't need to use scrap wood. You can cut it all from the same block and that way grain patterns and colors all match up. You just want to mark each piece so that you know exactly which, where it came from and what order to reassemble them in. This is a fantastic gift for any guitar player in your family or any stringed instrument player for that matter. Anyone that uses a pick would love this. Don't just, don't just limit yourself to making it an electric guitar. You could do a bass guitar if the recipient of the gift is a bass player. You could do a mandolin if it's a mandolin player. You could do whatever you want. Use your imagination. If they're not really an electric guitar guy, but they're more of an acoustic player, then why not do an acoustic guitar? This project lends itself to a ton of modifications. Um, even shaping the edges to be more like a guitar body. You could 
change up species, sandwiching uh, different colored woods or more contrasting woods to give it a more striking appearance. You could do inlays of pick guards. You could wood burn a pick guard in it along with some pickups and maybe even some strings. You could, you know, if there's one thing I wished I would have done on this project, and if I make another one, I will be doing it, is I would have spaced the picks a little further apart. That way I could embed rare earth magnets in the lid and the body so that when it goes back together, it closes tight on itself and won't open unless you open it. Um, but you know what? It was an experiment that really turned out well as far as I'm concerned. And as I said, opens itself up to modifications and those magnets would most likely be one of those modifications. <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. This is a fantastic skill builder and even just being able to scroll along the lines of a template is, is fantastic for building your skills on the scroll saw. This project doesn't take long to make and you can bang several of them off in an afternoon and just have a blast with it. The scroll saw is one of the most relaxing forms of woodworking and to produce something like we did today, that makes it one of the most satisfying as well. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.